Good morning. Um, my name is Ruth Pidsley, and um, I'm also a researcher in the cancer epigenetics team here at the Garvin. And today I'd like to tell you about how we're using epigenetics to think outside the box to find new ways to detect cancer. So why is early and accurate diagnosis important in cancer? Well, it's important to diagnose cancer early because in that way, it means that we can treat the tumour whilst it's still in one place in the organ before it's had a chance to spread out through the body. Also, it's important that when we do detect cancer, we can assess the type of cancer and its aggressiveness very early so that we can give the patient the right sort of treatment for um, their, their type of cancer to give them the best chance of success and the least side effects. So it's important to improve cancer diagnostics so that we can improve the quality of life and survival of patients. And I'm going to tell you about how we're planning to use epigenetics to study um, to improve prostate cancer diagnosis. So to give you a bit of background, a typical prostate gland sits in front of the rectum and underneath the bladder. And it's roughly the size of a walnut. It's only found in men because its main role is to produce part of the fluid which makes up semen. And prostate cancer occurs when cells within the prostate start to grow uncontrollably and they form a malignant growth called a tumour. If you, if you zoom in on the prostate, you see individual glands which are made up of well-organised epithelial cells. These are a type of cell that line every internal surface of your body. But during the, the development of prostate cancer, these epithelial cells begin to change and divide uncontrollably to become a tumour. Currently, the most accurate way that we have to detect and assess a tumour is to take a biopsy from the prostate and visualise these cellular changes under a microscope. So, as you've already heard in a few of the talks today, this transition from a normal healthy cell to a tumour cell takes place due to changes in the DNA code inside the cell. And this can either take the form of changes to the DNA code itself, which we call mutations, or changes to the chemicals that sit on top of the DNA, such as DNA methylation, which change the way that the DNA is read and how it controls the cell. So genes are specific chunks of the DNA, and one of the most well-known DNA methylation changes in prostate cancer occurs at a gene called GST pi. And our work has helped to show that in a normal epithelial cell, GST pi is completely unmethylated, but in a tumor cell, GST pi is methylated. And this is shown here in data from our lab. Um, and what's shown here at the bottom in blue is the location of the gene. And then in grey at the top are all the different places where DNA methylation can occur. And then the bars below this, their height represents the amount of the DNA methylation at that particular spot. And you can see that the tumour epithelial cells in red have much higher methylation than the normal epithelial cells in blue, which show barely any methylation in this region. And indeed, this change is so common and reproducible in prostate cancer that this finding has now been developed into a, a diagnostic test as a way to identify prostate cancer. So to put this another way, our current prostate cancer diagnosis involves taking a biopsy from different parts of the prostate and then you visualise them under a microscope. But another emerging technique is that you can take these same biopsy samples, extract the DNA from the cells in the sample and then look at the DNA for the GST pi methylation. And we find that the biopsies that come from cancerous regions have very high GST pi methylation whereas those from non-tumor regions have very low GST by methylation. So in our current work, we want to build on this um, original work and take a similar approach to see if we can use these epigenetic marks on other cell types in prostate cancer to further improve detection. And as I've already mentioned that epithelial cells are very important, but they're not the only type of cell in a prostate cancer. You also have other cells in the local environment and actually fibroblast cells are the next most abundant cell type in the prostate. And these can be thought of the scaffolding that holds the prostate together. 
And I'm really interested in these cells because in a healthy prostate, they communicate with the epithelial cells and they help them to grow and function normally. But during the development of prostate cancer, there are changes in the communication between these two cell types and the fibroblast cells start to change the way they look and behave. In other words, it's like the fibroblasts are being co-opted by the tumour cells. And you can think of this like a farmer um, tending the land to help, support its, to help support his needs. So in prostate cancer, as well as the epithelial cells, the fibroblast cells are also changing their shape and organisation and accordingly their epigenetics. And over several years' work, we've been able to look at the DNA methylation of each of these four different cell types and found other locations in the DNA that show changes in DNA methylation in the cancer fibroblasts as well as the tumour epithelial cells. So again, you can see here that in the two cancerous cell types in red, there's much higher methylation than in the normal, um, normal fibroblast and epithelial cells in blue. So having identified these regions, our next concern is about how we might be able to apply this to improve prostate cancer diagnosis. So as I mentioned before, a biopsy will be taken and tumour cells can be detected using a microscope or using gst pi to look for tumour epithelial cells. But what happens sometimes is that the biopsy needle can actually miss the tumour and end up taking a sample um, that doesn't contain any tumour epithelial cells. And then if you looked at this sample with the current techniques, you would say that you would falsely say that someone did not have prostate cancer. So an analogy that I like to use is of the tumour being like a bullseye, and that at the moment our diagnostic techniques rely on hitting or sampling the tumour directly. But we want to be able to detect the tumour even if we hit somewhere else on the target board. So in this analogy, the outer, the rings, outer rings of the board are like the cancer fibroblasts that surround a tumour. And we're currently working to see if we can use the specific epigenetic changes that we've identified in the cancer fibroblasts, um, in if we can use them in prostate cancer diagnosis, to widen the zone that we can take a biopsy from. Of course, the holy grail in cancer diagnostics is actually to avoid the biopsies in the first place, as they can be unpleasant and they can have side effects. So the next big step that we see in our research is to use non-invasive methods to diagnose and monitor cancer. And a breakthrough over recent years is that scientists have realised that tumours shed cells and fragments of DNA into the bloodstream. And therefore, it's possible to take blood samples and measure the DNA of the bloodstream to see if it contains any of these epigenetic marks that are indicative of cancer. So in prostate cancer, this would mean looking for evidence of DNA with gst pi methylation that's circulating in the blood. So um, work from our lab has shown that we can indeed detect gst pi methylation in the blood of prostate cancer patients. But more than this, the data also shows that the level of gst pi methylation in the blood before treatment can indicate how well a patient will respond to chemotherapy. And also that the levels in the blood after, after three months of chemo can indicate whether the patient is going to show any risk of the prostate cancer recurring. So you can see that epigenetics is not only useful for diagnosis, but also for tracking how well people are responding to treatment, which can in turn help doctors make the right treatment decision for their patient. Um, the same strategy doesn't just apply to prostate cancer. We're also doing other work in our lab looking at breast cancer to see if we could take blood samples to track how well someone's responding to treatment. So in conclusion, I just wanted to come back to the title of my talk, which was Thinking Outside of the Box. And through this presentation today, I believe that there are three ways in which we're finding new ways to improve cancer diagnosis and monitoring. The first is that current diagnosis relies on taking a biopsy sample and looking at the cells under a microscope. However, sometimes the microscope will miss cancerous changes, especially if the cancer is at a very early stage. So we're using epigenetic methods as a sort of molecular microscope to zoom into a much higher magnification to look for changes on the marks of the DNA. The second way that we're thinking outside of the box is that current methods rely on detecting tumour cells themselves, whereas we're also interested in exploiting the fact that the tumour cells change the cells surrounding them 
which again we can pick up using epigenetic techniques. And finally, we want to help find non-invasive ways of detecting um, cancer, which at the moment rely on taking biopsies. Um, but by looking at small amounts of DNA methylation in the bloodstream, we hope that we can find cancer in this way. Thank you for listening. <laughs>